We got Julio in the chair today. So he wanted to get a, a side part haircut and gonna wear it with a hard part. He had like a good load of mid fade on the sides. So let's go ahead and walk you guys through the steps on how to do this one. So we know that we want him to bring his hair this way and it's gonna part on this side. Always wanna take into consideration the cowlick. You can see here how this hair is kind of springing up and coming down. Well, we're gonna do his part in a way that flows in harmony with the crown, the tornado, the hurricane, whatever you wanna call it, but it's the, the swirl in the back of their head, most commonly referred to as the crown. So you can see we've already found where the part is gonna lay. I like to put the teeth of my comb right along that, slide it to the side, and then pull the hairs up or down. That's been, it's one of the easiest ways for me to straighten out a part. But we like cutting from the top first, and then we worry about the fade. We're gonna to wanna to make sure that we were cutting basically into a finished product so that way we don't do the fade and then go back and do the top and then decide it doesn't flow well together. So we're thinking ahead at all points while we're doing this haircut. So I'm gonna start here from this crown. A lot of haircutting kind of focuses around the crown, right? So if I start here, let's go ahead and set our foundation. I do that because I need to make sure that this hair is long enough to lay down. You don't wanna have the, man, what do they call that when the hair be sticking up in the back? Um, the alfalfa, no alfalfa. This is an anti-alfalfa cut. So let's go ahead and set the perimeter all the way around. Now, since this is a slightly disconnected haircut, uh, since he wears it in a side part, I'm gonna keep my t fingers tight to his head on this left side, on the side of the part. So we're bringing all the hair down up until about the ear. So now that we're at the ear, we need to let him have some length to be able to style it. So instead of being all the way tight against his scalp like this, I'm gonna flare out my fingers just a little bit and we're gonna start angling outwards towards the side so he can have something to brush. And you can see this length actually matches pretty well to the longest length of, of hair that he has in the front. So let's go ahead and start to refine it a little bit and we're gonna ride this guideline right back to the ear. And now we're back to tight on the head. Now, since it's disconnected on this side, let's go ahead and pick up the hair here in the very front. And you can see, you see how it's getting shorter here on this side? We're gonna wanna match it. We'll pick a point right about here. Let's go with this one. And we're gonna cut that. This is how we're gonna match the top length to the perimeter that we established on the side. Now try your best to cut this hair flat. I'm gonna keep a nice square shape on it. It's gonna keep it with nice full volume. I'm gonna brush it kind of to the side, kind of back, like right in the middle, almost like the hair is going to a 45 degree angle. One way that we can make sure that it was cut nice and smooth is now we can start picking up the hair kind of at an angle and we're gonna start looking out for peaks and valleys in the hair. You can see short point, short point, long point in the middle. Let's go ahead and start smoothing it out. So we already did this horizontally, but now we're just gonna kind of refine the shape of the haircut, doing it diagonally as well. So we can already see that it's flowing really nice and it's getting ready for a nice fade. Now I'm gonna do the same here on this side while the hair is brushed in that style. Let's go ahead and pick up a little bit of the hair. And since I know we're gonna go down to about starting at a number four length and then fade down the skin, I'm gonna follow right along that area that we already set our perimeter and let's tighten it up just a little bit. You can really see it right here. You see that point right there? Well, this is just gonna allow us to gradually bring it up, get ready for our clipper work and our fade. So at this point right here, now we can go ahead and start to clear some bulk with this number four guard. And I like to use the number four primarily because it leaves the hair pretty dark. So that way you can have a nice contrast. So on this side, I'm just gonna go right up to about where we created our initial guideline with the shears. You can see we're doing a little bit of sculpting too here. I've got full pressure at the bottom, but as I get a little higher, I kind of lift the clipper up off the scalp and I do a little bit of free handing. It really helps layer the haircut. And that's exactly the technique that I'm gonna take back around this way. Initially, we just cleared bulk. I needed to make sure that it was all nice and even. And one of the techniques that we're gonna use to clear out some bulk is a little bit of free handing, just along the ridge where there's a good bit of weight. So now that we already have the, the foundation set, let's go ahead and define this hard part. So just remember that, you know, for me, I feel like pulling the longer hair away from it, holding it tight and then coming down on the part first is a real good way to do it. 
The reason that you're gonna wanna hold that long hair tight and away from the part is just to make sure that you don't catch any of those long hairs with the trimmer. Now while we're here as well, since he does have a lot of growth right here in this corner, we can go ahead and define the corner, bring down the hairs that naturally are gonna fall there. Now look, now that you cut this corner in here, we're gonna be aiming towards the orbital bone. So I recommend starting just by dragging this clipper downwards towards there, maybe define just a little bit. Now we got some space so we can go ahead and create our blend. I'm not gonna completely bald out his corner. We're actually gonna keep a little bit of that for the lino. So this is gonna be a good bit of a mid fade. It is gonna curve slightly just to complement the shape of his hair and, and his parting. And we always start with the clipper close. And as we go over in most of our videos, we completely go with the clipper close to start off the fades because if we go in and start with the trimmer, Remember, that machine is made for punching in sharp lines. It's not really meant to blend. So you're just gonna be creating more work for yourself. Again, I'm gonna leave a bit of that corner there. Without moving the lever, let's slap that zero guard on. So now we've got the zero guard closed and we're gonna go up a solid inch so that way we can create some space. If you're gonna compress the fade anywhere, compress it towards the top. You never wanna compress the fade down here towards the bottom, closer to the bald area, because that's what's really gonna give it that that bowl cut look. Now notice it is at this point that we bring the guideline up to that corner so we can have just a little bit to line up. So I'm gonna start with my clipper open and we're just lightly gonna feather over that line of demarcation. We already know that this line of demarcation was created with the clipper closed so by the time that we little by little work our way down we should have no problem taking it out. And now that that's gone let's go ahead and take it all the way around. Now again why do we start with the clipper open instead of with the clipper closed? I do that because you know, it's just way too easy to go just a little bit too high. If I start with the clipper close, what if I go just a little bit too high and now all of a sudden I have to keep pushing higher and higher and higher to blend out that area. So now, instead of a mid fade, I've got a high fade. Instead of a low fade, I've got a mid. So just to be able to keep your results exactly where you want them, we're gonna start with the clipper open. Let's go ahead and start extending our fade up a little bit. Now, I'm not gonna force a new guideline or anything like that. I'm gonna show you here from this angle. I'm gonna let the shape of the head determine how high I go with this number one guard. I'm really gonna just start rocking it off the side of the head. Let's clear a little bit of space, keeping our straight up and down motions, using the slope of the scalp to determine how high we go. Let's take this all the way around. This just goes to show you guys, when you really hone your craft and you take time to learn these muscle memory movements, you, you can really save a lot of time just being more efficient without losing quality. Because look at all this that you, all this ground you can cover with the number one guard. Really clear a lot of bulk. Instead of having to go back and set guidelines with the one, with the two, with the three, I'll never go back to that because I took the time to learn all this. Now we're gonna close up that number one guard. And we're just gonna feather over that little line of demarcation. I'm not gonna be going super high with it. I'm just gonna concentrate on this area of demarcation, following up with the zero guard, and we'll start open because it's safer, and then we're gonna work our way down close. Because think about it, this line of demarcation was created with what? The zero guard close. So that means that as soon as we take that zero guard and we work our way down to close, we should have no problems taking it out. Now, if I know that that little section right there, hair tends to accumulate there, that's where we can use our blending shears. And you see just a few of those strokes right there really help to blend together. Sometimes blending shears is a secret sauce, guys. It kind of cuts every other hair, to say. And y'all can already see how awesome this shape is coming together. So before we bald it out, let's go ahead and just define this corner here. We're just gonna cut a few of those overlapping hairs so we can really define that corner nice and sharp. And this is the most rewarding part of the whole haircut, guys. Since we started off with the clipper closed, now look at how easily that balding out with the trimmer just flows into the haircut, completely effortless. And don't forget to look at how powerful this trimmer is. In one stroke, it's cutting through the thickest of bulk. I mean, this is so, the last time you texted me was December, right? Mm -hmm. So from December to midway through, we're midway through April already, right? Oh, yeah. April 20th? Guys, this is five months of bulk. And look at how easy the Stylecraft Flex Trimmer is just mowing through the hair. And do you feel any irritation, any pulling, anything? Nope. Nothing? Have you at all throughout the whole haircut? No. Y'all, I don't promote Stylecraft for no reason, man. They have amazing quality. An 
effortless debulking job, an effortless blending job. So when you pair the right tools with the right techniques, with the right thought processes, you get some awesome results like this, guys. And now when you fully bald out, then you could start to see the little detailing that has to be done. You see some areas that appear now darker than they did before you bald it out. Maybe you've seen it on camera the whole time, but I didn't until now. You know, when you're looking in person and when you're looking in the mirror or when you're looking through a camera lens, those are all three different viewpoints. Sometimes you want to look at your haircuts through all three of those mediums before you let the client out the chair. And remember, when you're going through this detailing phase, you're cutting such small hairs to make the whole blend come together. This is where you use your ears and you truly use your Andes Master Blade to its full potential. You could hear just a few hairs that are being cut, but these are the smallest hairs that make all the difference. Brand new, bro. He's brand new. Hold on, I'm gonna give you the mirror in a second. Now, even though it doesn't look like he needs it, guys, you're gonna wanna make sure that he gets that extra couple days of freshness. So take your Bronze Series 9 shaver. I'm gonna have a description to this in the comments, in the description below, and just make sure that you run over the very bottom parts of this fade here. Now, for the finishing touches, go ahead and put your Sean Cuts hair clutch card right up on there. And you don't wanna do much at all. Just give it that, give it that little pop right there in the corner. Do the same right here in this corner and then you can go from here and now slide it down to this corner just so that way you can hit that line now take the long edge of the of the sean cuts hair color enhancement card that right there and just to make sure that has a real nice soft natural finish just use a little bristle brush to blend out the little bit of color enhancement right there on the edge make sure that you get rid of all these extra hairs You look brand new, man. Look at this. <laughs> oh, yeah. That looks good. I don't know if you do this on purpose, but like, you, I don't see myself to the end. You do that on, on purpose? Is that planned? I, I might be doing it subconsciously. I like it. I love it, oh, man. Great, Dude, man. you're brand new, man. Do you want to yeah. make any adjustments to it? No, nah, man. It looks great. Dude, that looks Perfect. awesome. Perfect. That's awesome.